The Independent National Electoral Commission has said the current fuel scarcity in the country may affect logistic arrangements for the February 25 and March 11 general elections. INEC Chairman Mahmoud Yakubu stated this at a consultative meeting with the transport unions, including Nigerian Association of Road Transport Owners and the National Union of Road Transport Workers, amongst others, on Tuesday in Abuja. Now, the INEC chief also urged transporters to be neutral and non-partisan as they commute INEC staff to and from polling units. According to him, interstate trips won't be allowed, saying all INEC and ad hoc staffers must not be beyond their local government areas. Well, joining us to discuss this is Ifan Koye. He's a public affairs analyst. And uh, also joining us is Adewali Adimola Justice. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us. Good evening. Yeah, let's start by looking at this fuel situation. I mean, people are making fun of it. Nigerians always have a way of trying to, you know, say something that would, you know, make us laugh, even though we're suffering. Um, people keep asking, which line are you on? Which queue are you on? Is it the PVC queue or the fuel queue? Or are you queuing for Naira? Unfortunately, this is the current situation in Nigeria. Everybody sees you. They don't say, how are you? Do you have cash? That's the question. And, and the fuel scarcity is also a problem because we don't have light, so we need the fuel to power our homes. Um, do you see us surviving till uh, the election day? Uh, we've survived worse things than this. If have we go we? back to the NSA scenario, hmm. we've survived worse things. And before now, we've survived the high increment in the FX, uh, the BDC, the dollar. So why won't we survive uh, the cash crunch or the increased price in PMS products? But don't you think that if, if it were just the increase in the price of PMS and then we could drive in at will and buy fuel, it would not be a problem? Why yeah. is it that we're paying so high and then we don't even still see the fuel? The, the, uh, I think it has to do with the independent marketers because some people, you, you see some people selling fuel at a very ridiculously cheap price, as less than 200, some sell 400 within southwest then you go places like the east yourself you see 500 550 and they tell you that when they buy those fuel from the depot depot transloading it from their truck and taking it that that's another cost and those things have to be factored and me looking at those things i think that the fuels are not scarce it's just the issue of where do they purchase it from at what cost and the end users from the independent marketers who are they? How do they get the product? Hmm. That is another issue. And that's where the issue of uh, the NMPC or the regulatory body comes in to make, to see there as a proper decentralization channel and another source of making sure the products are readily available with a control mechanism hmm. for price. And this brings back to the question, what's the NMPC doing? Because everybody seems to be tight-lipped about this issue. Um, the NMPC has been rechristened and rechristened over and over again, hoping that, you know, if the window dressing will help things change. But Nothing is happening. We've not even heard from DPL that's supposed to regulate. Nothing has mm. been heard. What do you think is responsible for the well, tight lipsness? Not lopsidedness. It has to do with the leadership. Because the president is, as of today, the last time we all know, he still remains the uh, Minister of Petroleum. And with the recent privatization in NMPC, I don't think anything really much has happened. And looking at the issue of the fuel subsidy, the claim they have been paying, that they want to stop, that, oh, they are still paying for a subsidy. Only of recent, uh, one of the governors in the north said they can't stop the uh, payment of a subsidy. And you find out that we don't know what really happened in the system. The more we look, the, the, less, the, the more we keep the understand. So we need somebody who is going to come as the elections are around or a change in government, somebody who, who, who will be genuine, who, who have a course that's, to tell that's Nigeria this is what far we want. Away. I'm so sorry to talk over you. That is so far no, it's away. it's part of it because yeah, the, the yes, oil is part of it. That, the, but the, in the, the oil interim. is our major source of revenue. Yes. And it's, it's, we, are, we are looking like as if they are doing us any favor by selling it to, to us at a high price. Yes. Telling us that other countries that they have, though they sell 500, 600. So it's, it's sad. But in the interim, because you see elections, yes, may be over in February and in March, but then we still have a long way to get to then. Between now and the weekend, you don't know how you're going to survive if you're going to be able to get fuel to go to your job. Or we are Nigerians who survive. <laughs> we have been surviving. Is this not part of our problem? Why, why it, it we think that we can survive and that's why it the, might be part the problems of our keep problem. piling up? We are, we are almost close to the pool, less than three weeks. Today, it's okay. just left 23 days to the pools, with the three weeks plus. So with all we have gone through in the past seven years plus, I think nobody should be told that we need a barrel revolution. 
by taking our own faith into our hands. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is where we find ourselves at this moment. It's interesting. Let's talk about how this will affect the election because you see, for now, you say Nigerians will survive. But then we know the job that INEC has and the heavy lifting, the movements. I mean, remember what happened in Anambra elections. Transporters at some points wanted to, you know, disrupt the election because of one thing or the other. Same thing happened to core members whose parents refused to sign off for them to be, you know, at the polls. So again, if this is a major problem for INEC and you're saying we can survive, what's the, who's to say that you'd not be at the election or polling units waiting for hours and hours for your materials to arrive? I think that's a big challenge because most Nigerians don't take the, the statement made by the uh, Professor Mahmoud Yakub as a serious statement, knowing the implication of what those things come, brings about. Because if there is no fuel to, for vehicles to convey materials, which are logistics, I think we've, we, the previous election, the, the postponement was also, also cited as a result of logistics issues. And I will blame them partly, and I won't blame them, because it's over a year this election has been captured in the budget, mm -hmm. and they ought to have planned. But based on how the economy is being structured with the crisis we are facing, I won't blame them more. I won't blame them so much. Mm -hmm. But on the part of the INEC chairman, I believe that by now they should, as people who have conducted series of elections, it should not be a challenge. There should be a way around this. How are they supposed to do that? They're not in charge of PMS in the country. Is because that I listened when he said they are meeting out with the NURT and the NATO to see how they can form an alliance or a synergy to help talking, because it's a union, talking to the transporters or the drivers mm -hmm. to bring in their vehicles on the period to the day of the election to convey within their localities mm -hmm. So for them to be able to convey materials, maybe from one point to another point, and those vehicles should not come from far distance. It should be within those... But they need fuel to move those vehicles. They, yeah, they need fuel. So looking, all, looking at all those things, I believe that INEC on their own part should make appeal, if not to the NMPC or to, to some of the independent marketers, to solve this crisis. Because it will be very sad on the day of election. Because we have experienced this before. In previous election, as they move along the way, convey materials, some of them get missing. They can't account for them. Or there's a mix-up. Mm. And those becomes problem. You find out that some polling units will not get their materials till noon or afternoon. Mm. And it delays the process. Or the process has been mad, mm. as the case might be. So it becomes a very serious challenge for the electoral umpire. And the only way they could do this, like I've said, is meeting the independent marketers or NMPC to have a synergy or partnership to mitigate these issues. Okay, okay. I think Ademola Justice has finally joined us. Mr. Justice, um, do you see this situation dealt with any time soon? Because I just finished having a conversation with representatives of the... Um, APC and the PDP, and there's been an accusation back and forth. In fact, the APC is uh, accusing itself um, of, you know, sabotage, um, citing the same issue of fuel and, of course, the, the Naira notes. But looking at what the situation is right now, knowing that for materials to be moved from one place to the other, fuel needs uh, to be in those vehicles. But my biggest question is, who's, who's in charge of regulating um, you know, the sale of PMS in this country, because it's, everybody seems to be very quiet on this particular matter. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Hello? I can hear you. Go ahead. Hello? I can hear you. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. I am, yeah, I am indeed very, very glad that you have had a talk with the ruling party and the representatives over this issue. Like my colleague in the studio was saying, my position is the fact that this is a politicized fuel scarcity. I wonder that. Mm -hmm. Hello? Yes, I can hear you. Just go ahead. Yeah, this is a politicized fuel scarcity. And there is a grand design. Or 
Yeah, and there is a grand design, or there are grand designs to frustrate the conduct, the successful conduct of the elections, even by the political party itself. Who in charge of fuel supplies? NNPC imports fuel. NNPC is in charge, and NNPC directs the social and sale of fuel. But at a period like this, like I said earlier at the session, I said what we are going to do at this period in the electoral session of the country's life is a deliberate grand design for the party to fail. Because like I was asking, we used to know PPPRA, we used to know DPR, and also you can see filling stations selling at I, I'm sorry, I, I think we're losing you, but did you say that this was a grand design for the party to fail, for the APC to fail? Uh, who appointed these people who are heading these departments, these agencies, the CBN governor, the guy who heads the NNPC? These are all APC members, so why would this be a grand design to make their own ship, um, you know, um, not sail in 2023? Mr. Justice, can you hear me? Well, I think that we lost that connection. I'm going to come back to you. Very interesting times that we live in. Yeah? <laughs> um, <laughs> but but, but I, I'll ask the same question. Who are the regulators? Because I, re I remember uh, the PPRA, uh, DPR is supposed to make sure that you are, you know, the pump price is stuck to. And normally people are fined. Filling stations are shut down, but we see nobody. And so I'm asking... Um, who should we be talking to? Yes, everybody's saying Mr. President is the Minister of Petroleum, but there are, there are, there's the Minister of State for Petroleum. There is the head of the NNPC, and, and there's so many other places that we could look to. You know, but in who government, exactly do we call on right there now? There is bureaucracy in government. You know, it might be really, there, there, yeah, there is an agency that uh, has the uh, responsibility for regulation of the pump price, or will I say the distribution? But sometimes they always wait for, okay, a, an order or a memo from their superiors before they carry out their duty. How long does this take? So I don't really know. So the, the, it's, it's sudden because sometimes the questions we should ask is not uh, who is to regulate. The question is we should ask ourselves, is NMPC entirely free? or Because if, ever since last year, there have been a first casting in Abuja. Uh, since February, which I knew very well of when I was in Abuja. Then af after six months, maybe by June, July, it disappeared. Later, it came back again. So you, fi you find out that uh, we have had one of the longest first custody under this regime. Mm. And nobody could explain or tell us what is really happening. Um, a few weeks ago, if not three weeks ago, the DSS had come out with uh, a press release giving... Um, petroleum marketers a 48-hour ultimatum to make sure that there's fuel and um, the queues disappear. I don't know if 48 hours has expired because we're still at it. And again, it, make, it brings it calls to the question of um, who's really in charge here because everybody seems to be coming out with different statements, but nobody's really saying anything. And where do we go from here in closing? Uh, the 48 hours, like you said, my uh, elapsed. I'm not a security agency. We're only watching what they are doing. The reality is that the president has the finance and the, the, the NMPC who are in charge of regulating how um, the, uh, the PMS products, because there's an agency under the NMPC, and they, they are the ones who supervise how these crude uh, go in and come out. So the responsibility is left with them. We Nigerians, ours is just to call the attention of whoever is responsible. And who's this person? Who will be calling? Because we don't know. The highest person we know. Even if there's a regulatory person within the agency, it doesn't ring a bell. Like I said, there's a bureaucracy. He still waits to take orders from his superior, waiting for a memo to act. Also, the DSS just made, they have made noise, but they should come and act. They will need an order to, to, they will need an order to back up their threat. Hmm. It leaves the question as to... Uh, like what the, the previous person said, it's just a politicized... Uh, the, poli the first, of, the first um, scarcity is a politicized one to make the party fail. Nigerians are not interested in your party. We are interested in good governance. If APC fails today, 
so far we have so we, we if we can get so an alternative to APC, people will be better. Well, I want to say thank you. Fanny Okoye is a public affairs analyst. Unfortunately, Adewale Adomola Justice uh, was having connection issues, but we thank you also for participating in the conversation. And let's hope that this all goes away in, in the next few days. Yeah, thank you. All right. Much. Well, that's it on the show tonight. I am Mary Anakon. Don't forget, you can still get your PBC before that window shuts right in your face because that is your passport to a new Nigeria. I'm Mary Anakon. Have a good evening.